Hey guys, my name is Lockie and this is the Coast Watch Football Podcast. Of course, every single Tuesday we sit down here to talk all things A-League Ben, Central Coast Mariners, Australian football, and hope you guys have had a fantastic week and have been enjoying all the football that we've been experiencing over this past weekend. Of course, unfortunately, some games postponed due to the, the terrible weather that's been lashing the East Coast of Australia. And if you're listening, I know we've got a lot of listeners from Queensland. If you're in, if you're in especially South East Queensland, Northern New South Wales have been really been affected by floods. Thoughts go out to you guys and uh, yeah, look, it's a bit of a crazy time at the moment, but football is always here to provide us, to provide us, I guess, an escape and uh, to bring us together. It's something that brings us together, and that's that's obviously something that we always like to remember. And today in this podcast, uh, we're really going to do, do a deep dive into my team, Central Coast Mariners. And it, specifically a tactical deep dive. And I haven't really done too many tactical deep dives. And it's something that I've wanted to do more in terms of talking about formations and stuff like that. Because I know a lot of you guys listening are really interested in that sort of stuff. And, you know, me the same as well. And there's some there's some good YouTubers out there that, that, that do stuff like this on Australian football. And I thought this might be a good time to dive into my team, Central Coast Mariners, because this is, there's no better t- time than right now. So let's let's just touch on the Central Coast Mariners and how it's looking at the moment because it's the season. It's been a funny season, a season that started so well. We were so impressed with how Nick Montgomery um, was was approaching the season and taking this team through those opening rounds. Picked up a couple of losses, but still we're looking pretty good and we're optimistic that this was going to be yet another successful season for the Mariners, uh, t- another top six finish for the Mariners. Made it to the FFA Cup final, of course, unfortunately lost, but still that was a massive achievement. Nick Montgomery taking the club to the to their very first FFA Cup final. Um, in, in their history, uh, within a few months in charge. It really was remarkable. But as we record here, Mariners currently sit second bottom on the ladder, 11th place, 12 games played, three wins, two draws, seven losses, 17 goals scored, 20 conceded. And at the moment, currently have the worst uh, winless run. Uh, there's plenty of other teams who have been sort of picking up wins here and there. And, uh, you know, c- contesting, obviously, things are getting really tight, especially towards the middle sort of section of that table as we enter sort of the, the, the bottom half, if you like, of the top six. Uh, we do see City and Western pulling away at the moment. But but such goes Mariners have well and truly dropped away and... There was always the sense that we were going to, you know, turn things around, especially we had quite a few games in hand there for a little while. Um, we're really leveling up with some of these other teams in terms of games in hand. And now there's a big concern in terms of uh, what's going to happen now for the Mariners. Turning, How do we turn it around? It's really is, this is the first real test for Nick Montgomery right now. Of course, we know what's happened in recent weeks. Uh, the absolute catastrophe in the Melbourne City game. Uh, no reason to talk about that. We all know what, what went down. Um, and and but aside from that, the late goals that we've been conceding has really been affecting the fan base. And I've been reading the comments. You guys have been sending in messages and comments and DMs, and I hear it. And I, and I and I'm totally with the sentiment. Of course, it is frustrating. It is so frustrating. And it keeps happening. It's remarkable. Of course, just last weekend, Adelaide, 16 year old Ian Kunda comes off the bench and smashes home a winner. And again, it's these it's these split second decisions or not decisions but split second sort of mistakes or moments here and there if we lose a duel that, that the, the opposition could get in and they always seem to capitalize it's, it's it's just really getting frustrating now and there's now questions being asked about Montgomery in terms of not Montgomery I mean the, on the more extreme side there are being questions asked of Nick Montgomery, Montgomery in terms of whether he's the right man to continue leading the Central Coast Mariners I still think he is I think a lot of fans are, are still think he is uh, but in terms of tactics whether we could see a change for the Central Coast Mariners now the Mariners have been playing a 4-4-2 formation I was, I was trying to go back through all the all the games and everything I believe it's been almost two and a half years now the Central Coast Mariners have been playing have been playing a 4-4-2 or, or, or something very similar to a 4-4-2. Now, if we look back to Nick Montgomery coming in this season, it was, we'll keep an eye on whether he's going to shake up the formation. It pretty much is the same system that we were playing last year under Alan Stadich, the, the system that took us to third place on the ladder, that 4-4-2 setup. Alan Stadich really nailed it. The season before that, it was similar, but it was more of a 4-2-2-2 is rather than the two sort of wide players uh, in the midfield areas. Uh, they were sort of almost two number 10, similar to maybe what Sydney FC, Wellington Phoenix play. Um, I wasn't a fan of that formation. You know, those were the days of when we had the, the likes of Milan Juric, I think Tommy Orr as well. So it uh, for me, that, that wasn't a system that I'd 
personally enjoyed or thought was very productive for us and again another season where we struggled of course um, and prior to that when Stajic first came in and and, and and before that as well we were even at times playing a, 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 f- a f- five players at the back as well um, you know the, the the we had plenty of defensive options at the time and none of them really stepping up I mean Kai Rolls, Ruan Tong if we're there they're obviously different players now um, and and uh, but yeah man when we look at the team now it's it's such a squ- solid squad and the formation is very, you know, well mapped out, well planned. But is it not working? Is it time to change? Now, first of all, let's start off with what's working with the 442. And, and I will preface this as well. If you are listening to this um, on, on, via audio form, of course, this podcast is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, I recommend that maybe you, you check out this one in video form because this, this will be, this, it will certainly aid the episode um, if you check this out in video form because we're going to have the graphics up on, on the screen for, uh, for, the, for some of the lineups, which will certainly help explaining it. So... Here's the lineup the Mariners currently play at the moment, the 4-4-2 formation. And and the, the lineup we see here is the lineup that we've been playing for the last couple of games. Of course, Benny and Kalolo and Nikolai Muller look like they've, they've locked in those wide positions at the moment. Benny's been fantastic the last couple of games. Uh, it's been the Nisbet shifted back to the middle of the park position. He hasn't played as much in recent history. Uh, it's either been Max Ballard or Harry Steele in there, but Nisbet looks like he might he might have uh, locked away that spot. I think that back four, back four is locked in. People have talked about potentially Noah Smith coming in, Ruan Tongik maybe in for Dan Hall. I'm still backing those young guys. I still I still have faith in them to be honest. And then of course I, I, I believe Marco Reni and, and, and Jason Cummings is our is our probably our best strike partnership at the moment. Of course, got Mateus Moresh in there. So look, there's already a lot of position positions as you can see. I'm already mentioning where there's like personnel changes that could happen. And 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 there's even players I haven't mentioned like Cy Goddard, Matt Hatch, uh, you know players like that who could come in. And there's so many different setups and formations in terms of what's the go for the Mariners and. It's tricky to sort of decide which one's like the best system for us, and, and and again, that's why I'm doing this episode, and that's why I would really love your guys' feedback, especially on this episode, just to hear what you think is the right system forward. Is it should we just not change what's what we've got now? Is it is it is it working, or are these poor results the sign that maybe we need to change something? Mariners haven't picked up a league win since December 18. December 18. That's that's it's over two months since Mariners have picked up a league win. Yes, of course we had the COVID break. But still, my goodness, it's, it's, it really has been a remarkable um, stretch. So, um, look, the things that I like about the 4-4-2 formation, I mean, there's a lot of pairs around around the pitch. And, and, and by that, by pairs, when you look at the – you've obviously got the two central defenders, very common. You've got the two I, – I enjoy with the 4-4-2 system having two players in those wide positions, especially when we're defending – You've got uh, you know the wide the wide midfielders who can track back opposition uh, the the wing backs uh, opposing wing backs and then of course the two full backs are very solid in Jacob Farrell and Lewis Miller so for the two of those uh, on the wide positions two players to pair up I always enjoy of course the two midfielders Bazanic whether it is Dealey Nisbet Ballard always work hard in the middle and then of course the two strikers up top there's, you can see there's always pairs everywhere there's always two players uh, there to help out in every single position so. Um, er- every single area of the park, I should say. Um, so look, it's a very balanced formation and it probably is the most, you know, well-known formation in in world football and Central Coast Mariners have been playing it reasonably well for the past couple of years. Um, we're going to dive into now some of the uh, different formations. We've got a few formations here and I'll be showing you the graphics and, and I've put together my lineup for how I think these formations could line up. And one that has been brought up a lot, and I think it's been brought up a lot because it's quite revolutionary, if you like, or Maybe not revolution. I, th- no, I think it is revolutionary, actually, comp- especially compared to how you know we've been very um, pragmatic with our approach in recent years. This this would be qu- quite quite different, and it's a formation that Mariners played, or uh, well, more than a decade ago now under uh, under the likes of Graham Arnold. And it is this one right here, the diamond midfield formation. I've stuck with the same back four, but here's how I've set it up: the midfield. Uh, uh, diamond formation. So I think a lot of people would be happy to see Bazanic playing as that lone defensive midfielder, that pivot. Josh Nisbet on the, on the on that right hand side of the diamond. I've put Cy Goddard on the left. I, I feel like he might he might uh, he might be nicely suited in, in a diamond formation. Cy Goddard, and then Nikolai Muller in that number ten position, playing in behind Arena and Cummings once again. Nikolai Muller, I'd love to see him to play in a number ten role. And and Mariners haven't really played with with sort of a, a play a central playmaker for for a very very long time. Mainly because we haven't really had that sort of player for a long time. Um, Nikolai Muller is a player who it, it's a bit funny where his best position is. I mean, if you look at Western City Wanderers, he was sort of playing as as one of the three strikers in sort of a front three uh, formation for 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 Western City Wanderers last uh, season. And 
sometimes in that even tucking back in, in that sort of number 10 position behind the two strikers ahead of him and this could be a position where he could really flourish look at the support that Nikolai Muller has around him it's really his teams to set him up when you've got Cy Goddard and Nisbet and Bezanic behind him you've got that defensive cover Nikolai Muller doesn't really have to worry as much about his defensive duties and then supplying Arena and Cummings two players who love to get in behind who, who love to be fed the ball and can finish if they get inside the box this is a formation that could work, that really, really could work. My only concern with it, we have to talk about the pros and cons, of course. My only concern with it is is Bazanic as, as the lone defensive midfield and whether Bazanic is that kind of player. And and in recent weeks, a lot of the, the name, a name has been thrown around. A, a, a player who is who of course departed the club a few months ago. Gianni Stensness. And man, I, I was the biggest Gianni Stensness fan last year, man. He was so key to the Mariners' success last year. And his partnership with Oli Bazanic was a big reason. It was a big uh, factor to that success for the Mariners last season. I think I think the base of that midfield would have been perfectly su- in a diamond midfield would have perfectly suited Gianni Stenson, a man who could break up the play, uh, tall and strong, and good on the ball as well. Uh, Bazanic is good like that as well. but obviously lacks that aerial ability as well. Oli Bazanic physically probably not as strong. He's good at using his body, of course. Oli Bazanic, one of the best in in in, in the league, but. It just, I mean, when you think back to, obviously, Oli Bazanic is a completely different player to what he was a decade ago, or slightly different at least, but, um, you know, Oli Bazanic was playing on that left side of that diamond uh, back in, what, the early 2010s with McGlinchey on the right-hand side and the likes of, it was Roston Griffiths, actually, who was playing a defensive midfielder or uh, or Johnny Hutchinson. Um, different different days back then, but, uh, you know, could Bazanic play that role? I think he could, but again, just raising the point that if we had someone like Gianni Stensness, Maybe that would be more, more effective. And again, when you look at our other, our other defensive midfield options, we got, you know, I don't know if you could play Josh Nisbet as a lone defensive midfielder. I feel, I feel like he's great, but just by himself, I feel like he might get bossed. Um, Harry Steele, again, sort of similar to Nisbet and, and Bazanic, not necessarily uh, tall in stature. And, and Max Ballard, who who has decent strengths as well. But again, it's, it, it's the same concern every time that I think of the diamond formation. Yes, there's really exciting potential in attack. And and some of the creative play in midfield, especially with the number 10 there, it's, there's a lot, it's really appealing. But but I'm worried that this might create more ha- more uh, more havoc. We might be conceding more goals than than. Than, than we are at the moment. You know, we've, we've conceded 10 goals, uh, sorry, 20 goals this season, uh, which isn't great. Um, it's not the worst defense in the league. Um, but but look, it, it would certainly be a fascinating lineup. So, so, so it's, it's, and it's one that people, as I mentioned, keep bringing up. So it's a fascinating one that maybe Nick Montgomery could explore. It, it, would, it would mean the same sort of setup or similar setup, at least for the back four and the two strikers. So it's really just rejigging the midfield area. Um, that is if we want to get maybe Nikolai Muller more involved in a central position. This could work. Hey, let's shuffle on to the next formation right now. And this is a formation that I personally really like. It's a lot of football teams play it, and a few teams in the league at the moment play it in, in uh, Melbourne Victory, in Western Sydney Wanderers. Uh, well, not at the moment Wanderers, but they were playing it earlier this season. But the 4-2-3-1. A 4 2 3 one formation. And you can see the setup uh, that I've uh, laid out here in terms of some of the personnel. I've put Harry Steele in sort of the double pivot there alongside Oli Bizanic. Uh Nikola Muller once again in that number 10 role. I feel like if we're going to play a, a, a playmaker, central playmaker, I think it has to be Nikola Muller. I mean, you could play Cy Goddard in there. He's another option. Uh, or even Josh Nisbet could could work there. But I think Nikolai Muller um, is probably our best option in that in that, in that area. And I've put Benny Kololo out in the right wing and, and Mateus Moresh and Jason Cummings through the middle. So I've benched Arenya here. I've benched the likes of Arenya and Josh Nisbet. But Benny and Kololo, I mean, when you think of wide players at the Mariners, I mean, Josh Nisbet has sort of adopted that wide role in, in the past maybe 12 months. Uh, Cy Goddard, of course, can play in wide positions, positions, Matt Hatch. But Benny and Kololo, just in the last two weeks alone, uh, has, has shown that he is well and truly maybe Mariners' best winger at the moment. And uh, his ability to take on players, uh, to get a delivery into the box, um, and and to, to create danger from a wide position has, has been very good in these, in the, just in, the re, in these recent games. So I think if we do play a system that really allows wingers to flourish, which a 4 2 3 one does, then th- that could be a system where Benny and Kalula could really be comfortable in whether he does play on the left or right-hand side. Now, I have also put Moresh on the other wing. I think Mateus Moresh, uh, I-, I prefer him as a striker, but a few times this season he has been played out wide. And maybe, again, this formation... You know, again, with Nikolai Muller, imagine Nikolai Muller feeding the likes of Moresh and Benny and Kolo down the wings, two pacey players who love taking on opposition defences. Could be really fascinating. And then when you've got a clinical striker like Jason Cummings in the middle, 
that it's a really well balanced lineup. I mean, good in attack, and then just look at I, again. I just want to point out how how secure it looks as well in defensive midfield. Oli Bazanik and Harry still together, and whether you want to put in you know Max Ballard for Steele or even Josh Nisbet, it's just it, you've still got plenty of attacking potency with with, with those four attackers. But you, you've got the defensive solidity in, in midfield with Bazanic and, 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 and Harry Steele. Uh, partnership that have, have looked good this, this so far this season in games. I reckon I reckon that's, if we're talking purely defensive midfielders, that's probably our best partnership in my opinion. Um, same back four as well. But uh, look, it's, it's a formation that I think would like to be uh, see, see explored. Again, it's been a long time since Mariners have only played with a lone striker. This means playing with a lone striker. And Jason Cummings, I think, is probably our best striker. Uh, I think Michael Rennie has 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 dropped the ball a little bit in recent weeks. Unfortunately, Jason Cummings I think has to be starting. But look at that man, Nikolai Muller through the middle, in behind Cummings. Whether you have Benny, uh, Maresh, and then again, oh, think of the players you could bring off the bench. You know, in those wide areas, whether you got Hatchie, Goddard, Nisbet, and then Arenya through the middle. I mean, it's really really exciting. Some of the options that you can have there in terms of players coming off the bench. That's what you have to think of as well. You don't want to simply. You know, you want to have ammunition off the bench uh, if, if we need to chase these games too or shake it up and get some different personnel in there. So the four two three one is one, as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm a bit more favorable to. I'm, I, I really, it really does appeal to me. And, you know, just, just add, add, add other thing as well, adds one more man to the midfield. Adds one more man to the midfield. Maybe something we've lacked. Maybe something we've, we've lacked at times. I think of the Melbourne City game. The Melbourne City game, Melbourne City play with three midfielders. Aiden O'Neill is a holding midfielder. Baron Gare or Conor Metcalf in this game. I think it was Mark Cotillo as well, that other sort of midfield player. Um, you know, we're sort of running things at times times, and, and a very can very easy control games. And I, I look at the Mariners lineup and just see uh, for many times in that game, it was it was, um, it was Cummings and uh, was it Arrenia was starting or Moresh? I almost can't remember. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was Mark Arrenia who was starting up top. But it just felt almost useless to have two strikers sort of not really doing uh, as much when Melbourne City was sort of controlling the ball and midfield and moving forward. And imagine if we had just one of those players really dropping back into midfield, sort of, you know, nullifying Aiden O'Neill in that defensive midfield role. I mean, you'd, you'd think it'd be much more effective and rather than just having two strikers sitting at the top. Not saying that those guys are lazy and not doing anything, but just tactically as a, as a formation. Maybe a setup that would have nullified Melbourne City a little bit more in that game. So... Formation that I like. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the four-two-three-one. Again, a very popular formation in in modern football around the world. Let's shuffle along to the last formation now, and this is one that's that again I mentioned. Mariners played a few years ago, a couple of years ago, when Alan Stadich first came in. Briefly, not 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 for very long. It was a formation that we sort of shifted in and out of at times. Uh, but the five-three-two. So it means three central defenders, three central defenders. Now, could this work? Now, I think Mariners certainly have the personnel to do it. When we look at the back line, we haven't really touched on the back line at all because it's been so sad. But this means that Ruan Tongik comes into the side. Of course, Ruan Tongik has, has been in and out of the side this season, picking up injuries, just hasn't looked his best. Dan Hall's come in and has done a fantastic job, in my opinion. Um, this this would obviously allow the, all three of those central defenders to play together. And what it also means, which is pretty exciting, it gives more attacking freedom to Lewis Miller and Jacob Farrell. In my opinion, two guys who, when they're getting forward, just look unstoppable, especially Lewis Miller. I mean, one of the stand-up players for the Mariners so far this season and a player who, who week in, week out, is just getting more and more consistent and really looking solid defensively and providing a real threat. He's one of our. He's, he's a fullback, but he's one of our one of our most dangerous players. When, every time he's on the ball, taking on defenders, I just you just he's going to get around him every time and playing a ball. And uh, there's been a number of goals so far this season that have come through the hard work and determination of Lewis Miller. Now this formation, of course, when you're playing with wingbacks rather than just fullbacks, these wingbacks who are allowed to get up the field, and you can see in this formation here, provide more width. Now it is really really exciting because because obviously they don't have to worry as much in a defensive sense when you got Kai Rolls and Dan Hall sort of almost covering some of those wider back positions as well and then of course Ruan Tongik through the middle. Um, in midfield, I've gone for Josh Nisbet to Bazanic. I think again in this formation because you're playing with with an extra central defender, you almost don't really need as much coverage in a defensive midfield sense. Uh, 
So that align that allows for maybe Bazinic, Bazanic and, and Isbit, two more industrious midfielders to 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 come into that to the center of the park and and and, and run things. And then again, and then again, uh, uh, you can put you now you could probably swap around the lineup a little bit here in terms of whether you want to play number ten or play an extra sort of uh, mid central midfielder. But I've put Nikolai Muller in, in sort of an attacking midfield position once again, playing in behind Arena and Cummings. And again. Just want to reiterate, I think that would be really exciting to see Muller centrally behind Cummings and Arena. This is another option besides the diamond midfield that could work. So you, you, you get the same attacking trio there through the middle, but a bit more defensive stability in this in this setup compared to the dumb formation. So again, one that would be very different, would be a real change for Nick Montgomery. And I think it might take maybe a couple of weeks just to sort of for the players to adapt to it because they're so used to playing this 4-4-2 formation, these guys. They're so used to knowing where their teammates are in this shape. This would really revolutionize things, which again, you know, raises the doubt as to in terms of whether Montgomery would actually do something like this. But again, I, I think one of those formations that I've seen mentioned online in comment sections, people talking about, Three, three at the back. In the fan interviews we did, we did on, on the YouTube video, you can check it out. We we did, we interviewed some fans after the Perth Glory game. I think there was quite a few people who who brought up five players at the back. Um, and and it could work just to maybe just shore things up defensively. You know, maybe this might be the key. This specific formation might be the key to plugging the holes and stop conceding goals. Look at those three central defenders though, man. Ruin Tongik, Kai Rolls, both gotten Socceroos call-ups in the past 12 months. And then Dan Hall, one of the best young central defenders. In the league, and then when you got Jacob Farrell and, and Lewis Miller, it's like my goodness, that's that's going to be a solid defence, isn't it? And of course, playing ahead of one of the best keepers in Australia right now, Mark Birigidi, you'd, you'd think that's surely going to shore up uh, the defence there. And again, plenty of attacking thrust when you got those wing backs attacking, and then the, the, the front three of Muller, Cummings, Arenya. This really pro. The, 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 this, again, the, this this one really excites me. The more I think about it, actually, and just looking at it, it really sort of excites me and and the, and the potential for it. So those are the formations that I've wanted to pick out. Now, you could go into sort of more variations and different systems and different setups, but I feel like those are the main ones that we're sort of looking at. And and again, if you've got any specific formation suggestions, let me know in the comments and drop your thoughts uh, down below because we'd love to get your feedback. Again, from from what we can tell here, I mean, it's been good me just talking about it now. I've sort of been figuring it out as as we go as as well. And and the diamond formation, I'm not as comfortable with um, compared to maybe the, the going to something like a four two three one or even the five three two. I'm very open to the five three two uh, to play with three central defenders. Maybe the only concern with with playing three central defenders is uh, is that we mean uh, it means sort of we we lack another. It's, it's if you're going to play the system like that, you sort of have to bring in maybe another extra central defender or two, which we don't really have. We're sort of diving into our into our youth ranks in order to to find more defensive cover. Because aside from that, we really only have Stormy Rue and Noah Smith, a couple of fallbacks um, who could cover who could cover um, some of those defensive roles. So look, pros and cons to every to every formation. But I feel like at the moment fans are feeling a little bit feeling that the 442 formation is is getting a little bit stale and a little bit a little bit uh, it's, it's it's just maybe not utilizing some of the qualities of our players. And I think some of these other formations really highlight some of the qualities when you think of Benny and Cololo and his work rate and his industry and his ability to, to take on players as well as, well as Mateus Maresh, you know, Jason Cummings, Nikolai Muller. I think Nikolai Muller is probably that you know the most he's well he is the most experienced and classiest player at the club. He's he's got such uh such good pedigree, and and to, we need to really really need to be utilizing him rather than just relegating him to I think, you know, playing out wide. I don't know if that's going to work, Nikolai Muller. Again, another another thing that actually just on Muller, another one that I ever mentioned is playing him in the center of midfield. People loved that when he came on at halftime against MacArthur FC in that three all draw a few weeks back. Muller comes into midfield alongside Bazanic, provides a lot more drive. He was superb. But again, I, I, I get doing that again it just provides more sort of defensive. Uh, Opens things up defensively. Another formation that we haven't brought up a four-three-three again could potentially work. It's one of those ones where you could tweak things a little bit, uh, sort of similar to a four-two-three one, I guess, if you like. But maybe playing a four-three-three could work as well. You know, Melbourne City sort of uh, style of, of, of formation. So, so many options. Will Nick Montgomery actually change things? That's the question that we're asking. I think honestly, the answer is no. But this is this time right now is is more a time than ever to see to potentially see a change of formation for the Mariners in the first time in in over two years. This could potentially be it, and you know Mariners this upcoming weekend take on Brisbane Raw at home, and for me, 
is an absolutely a must-win game against a Brisbane Raw side who have really been struggling this season, especially away from home. They're still getting their things sorted out in terms of their best lineup, in terms of their formation. They've been chocking and changing things across the season. Mariners at home against Brisbane Raw, who are coming currently coming last in the ladder, have to win simply have to win if we don't win then we have big concerns and then and then it, you know the microscope really does uh you know fall on 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 nick montgomery in terms of you know we can't simply we're not going to accept you know losing games conceding late late goals for every every single week if this keeps happening because we're, it, we're rapidly falling down the ladder and 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 the, and the gap between um, where Mariners currently sit, uh, second bottom of the ladder, and, and, and the top six is is growing as it stands right now. Of course, we do have some gamers in hand when you look at the top six sides: Sydney FC, Adelaide United at the moment. Um, but we are currently what is it? Seven points outside of the top six. So some work still to be done, and we simply need to start winning games. <laughs> I don't know; it sounds simple, but it's 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 so important because out of twelve games, we've only won three, and it's weird too because we've been so positive about how the Mariners have been playing and a lot of these games will look very good and been competitive. But three wins in 12 games, you know, isn't going to be good enough in the long run when fans are already, as I mentioned, running out of patience. And, you know, potentially we might need to see something change sooner rather than later. So again, once again, we'd love to get your thoughts on some of these tactical setups, these formations in the comment section down below uh, or let me know on social media. What do you think of it? Uh, these potential, you know, options that could be instilled for the, for the Mariners uh, for the future this season. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this in-depth tactical um, insight into uh, the Central Coast Mariners for this podcast episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, let me know. Let me know. Did you, I would love to hear your, your feedback because if you have enjoyed it, um, we'd love to do it a, a whole lot more, maybe to some other A-League teams as well, looking at some of the tactical things that they're doing. So if it is something that you're interested in seeing more, uh, let me know. Drop your feedback in the comment section. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, my name's Lockie. This is Coastwood Football. If you haven't enjoyed, make sure you hit like, or if you're listening on a podcast platform, you can leave a star rating. Uh, you, can, you can leave a star rating if you haven't been enjoying the podcast episodes. And make sure you hit subscribe to keep updated to all of the new episodes dropping every single Tuesday. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.